Friends, it's October. And you know what that means? Crock-Pot season. <laughs> More specifically, the big giant YouTube collaboration series called Crocktober, where there's a whole bunch of different YouTubers. We all get together. We all share some of our favorite Crock-Pot meals with you guys. Basically, every day for the entire month of October, there's a different contributor putting out their favorite recipes to share with you guys. So Jenny Goff is the one who's coordinating it this year. I will put a link to all of the channels that are participating down in the description along with a link to the playlist, the entire playlist, as well as the Facebook group. There's a Facebook group for this. It has a lot of members and there's a lot of activity there. So make sure you check out all of those things. It's a lot of really good channels this time around. So what we're gonna be making today is pork tacos El Pastor. And is pretty darn good. You're gonna to wanna to stick around for this one. If you're looking at my ingredients and as we go through and we, and we put all this together, you're gonna to think to my, yourself, oh my gosh, that's gonna be really hot. If you taste it as you're making it, you're gonna say, oh wow, yeah, that's really spicy, too spicy for me. Once it cooks in your crock pot for a good eight hours, it mellows out, all the flavors really come together and blend really, really nicely. So there's a lot of really unique ingredients in this one. And there's kind of like three steps to this whole process. There's the creating the marinade that the pork is actually gonna cook in in the crock pot. There's the process of cooking it and then there's the process of eating it. <laughs> so we're gonna cruise through these parts. Um, the basic core ingredient will be your pork. And I have about um, just over three pounds of pork butt that I've sliced. Um, probably about an inch thick. You can use pork butt, you can use pork picnic roast, which is more like in the lower shoulder portion. You can also use pork steaks. Um, pork steaks are actually pork butt that they just slice up. Don't worry about stripping all of your fat off of it when you're doing this. You wanna leave some fat in there that's gonna to help to keep the pork moist. So for the marinade, we are going to utilize our Vitamix blender to mix and puree all of this stuff together. So if you don't have a blender, a Vitamix, any blender will do, a food processor, um, an immersion blender will probably be work, those little um, bullet blenders, any of those things will work. You basically just wanna take all of this and mix it together really well and puree it. So the, the, for one of the core ingredients for our, our marinade is pineapple. Now I started this off, this started off as a whole pineapple that I bought from the store. We did not grow this here. We do, cannot grow them here in Michigan. And this bowl contains about three quarters of that pineapple. I saved one quarter of it and I diced it up really small. I put that in the fridge. We're gonna save that for a garnish for later. One other thing that you wanna do is save Save some of your, your husks off the pineapple because once we get everything in the crock pot and everything's mixed up, we're gonna layer these on top of the pork to try to help retain some moisture. So in goes the pineapple. It's just um, chunked up in a medium, medium fashion. The blender will make quick work of that. I have three tablespoons of Mexican oregano. Now, if you don't have Mexican, you can, you can just use just about any any oregano. I have one whole clove of, or basically a whole head of garlic. It's been peeled. That's gonna go in there. I have uh, a third of a cup of white vinegar. I have two tablespoons of cumin. Ancho chilies. Now, ancho chilies, the ones that I purchased came like dried in a package like this. It was a two ounce package when they're dried. I did rehydrate these and put them in some warm water. Once they were soft and rehydrated, I basically, I split them open and I pulled all the seeds out of them and plucked the stems off. So this is basically one package of ancho peppers. Those are gonna go in there. Those smell wonderful. They almost have a smoky, um, a smoky scent to them. I have half a cup of orange juice. Any orange juice will do. Chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. This is the spiciest little bit of what we have going on here and this entire can is gonna go in. Sauce and all. And the last of our ingredients is annatto paste. Now this is the brand 
that I purchased at my local grocery store. I found it in the like Mexican Spanish food section of the grocery store. This is one of the one ingredients that you really want to try to make sure you include. This stuff is amazing. Super, super rich flavor. A little bit of spice, a uh, little bit of spicy kick to it. But this is what's going to set off the entire thing. It was basically a 3.5 ounce little block. Uh, almost looks like dried tomato paste in a way. Going in. All right, so this is our, you know, the color of that. Isn't that beautiful? We'll get our marinade in there and then we'll mix this up. Try to make sure all the meat is coated. And we'll take our pineapple pieces that we saved and lay them across the top like this. And that's that for today. We're gonna put the lid on this. We'll put it in the refrigerator. We'll let it sit overnight. Tomorrow morning when I get up, before I start work for the day, I'll kick, put this back in the crock pot. We'll turn it on low. We'll let it cook for eight hours. So you can either do low eight to nine hours, or if you're in a hurry, you can do high temperature for four hours, four to five hours. My gosh, guys, I so wish that smell -o vision thing on YouTube actually worked halfway decent because my house smells absolutely amazing. It's been cooking now for about nine hours on low. We're gonna take these pieces of pineapple husk that we put on top of it just to try to help it retain a little bit of moisture. These are just gonna get discarded. I'll let them cool off and we'll Give them to the chickens. Give them a nice tasty treat. So we are totally gonna call this next step totally optional. So traditional pork El Pastor is normally cooked on a, um, a rotating spigot, kind of like if you ever gone to like a, um, a Coney Island where they serve like gyros and they put all that gyro meat on that vertical machine and it sits there and spins all day and the edges get all nice and crispy. That's how this is normally traditionally cooked. It's sliced super thin, they stack it on that, on that spindle and they basically just let it sit there and cook all day. So it gets all these wonderful little like crispy edges on it and stuff like that. And then they'll slice it vertically, but it's stacked this way and they slice it this way into thin little pieces. So. The optional portion of this dish is we are going to put this on a cookie sheet and toss it under the broiler in our oven for just a few minutes to try to get things to crisp up just a little bit. I want a little bit of little, little black pieces here and there to show up. So got a couple taco shells, grilled them up a little bit with some cheese, layer on some of our pork. Now I have not tasted this yet, this batch anyways. I'm saving it for on camera to share with you guys. Man, this is, <laughs> I really want to eat this. So if you paid attention in the beginning, you saved a little bit of your pineapple. I diced this up kind of small. A little bit of uh, topped white onion. Give it a little crispiness. And then I have a little bit of a jar left of Rachel's peach salsa. Now, before you guys start commenting and say, oh, where's the recipe for the peach salsa? Uh, we didn't, we didn't film it. It was one of those weekends when I was up at the cabin and Rachel was here at home. The peaches were gonna go bad and she basically had to use them and I had the camera with me up at the cabin. So there's no video on that. Man, all I need is some cilantro. 
and that would set this off. I did walk around in the garden earlier to see if I could find any, and if there's some out there, I don't know where it is. I think it's hiding. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and we will uh, we'll taste this and see how it turned out. Does it look, guys? Amazing. I tried a bite already. Without you guys, <laughs> I really hate chewing on, on camera. Pretty darn amazing. If the um, if you followed along exactly the same way I made mine, there's enough marinade in in that recipe to basically do two to three times as much pork as I did. I only did like three pounds. You could easily do six, nine, maybe even ten pounds worth of pork with all that marinade. The pork is definitely not as hot as it was. I tasted that marinade after I poured it in and, and got it all mixed up. It was really spicy and I, I was a little bit worried. Um, but once it all cooks down, it's a little bit spicy. I'll give it that. It's got a little bit of kick to it, but nice rich flavors. Hmm. I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. So thanks a lot for coming along. Don't forget to check out the description of the video. There will be a link to all of the channels participating in Croctober extravaganza for this month. All of their their channel links should be in there. The playlist for all of the, the videos. I think ours is number five. So there's, there's ours and a whole bunch more after it. So keep checking back. And there's also a link to the Facebook group for the Croctober event. So thank you to Jenny for coordinating all this and putting it together. It should be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to checking out everybody's recipes. And yeah, I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. I will see you guys soon. <laughs>